What kind of impact can a woman have when she cultivates a joyous atmosphere in her home? And what are some practical ways you can build up joy in your home? Keep watching to find out. Hi everyone, I'm Jen. And I'm Elisa from Captivated by Him. On this channel, we get to share with you truths from God's Word so that we can apply His Word in our lives. We've covered topics such as true beauty and contentment, and recently we've been talking about biblical womanhood and how we as women can joyfully embrace our God-given design. In some of our previous videos, we talked about how God has given the wife the wonderful privilege and responsibility of caring for the home and cultivating a God-honoring atmosphere in the home under the leadership of her husband. Yes, and we looked at Titus 2, 3-5, which talks about how God's design is for women to be workers at home. The word for workers at home in that passage means someone who is a guard or keeper of the house. There's nothing inherently godly about staying at home. Just because a woman stays at home does not mean she's godly or spiritual. Rather, what is important and what has value is what a wife does in the home. As a wife, you get to work alongside your husband to set the tone and atmosphere in your home. You can help to make the home a place of joy and refuge, or you can make it a place where no one wants to be there. Do you make your home a place where your family can rest and escape from the pressures and temptations of the world? That's a great question to ask ourselves and think about. We want our homes to be a place of joy and where our families and those we live with are energized to serve God more. As women, we help to set the tone in the home and have a tremendous impact on those we live with. How we view life influences those in our home to view life the same way. That's right. If we view life as a cross to bear, we influence others to think the same way and can rob our families of their joy. But if we love God and find joy in the role that God has given us, then we can influence those in our home to love God and desire to glorify Him in everything they do too. These are important things for us to consider as we aim to fulfill the role that God has given to us as women. Even though it might seem like a daunting and weighty responsibility to care for the home, we can find joy in knowing that this is what God designed for us to do as women under the leadership of our husbands. And through His strength and grace, we can all create a godly and joyous atmosphere in our homes. Now that we have a foundation of the importance of building a joyous atmosphere in the home, how are we supposed to do this? I'm super excited to go through some practical tips that we can apply to cultivate joy in the home. Even if you are not married or don't have children yet, these are practical things that you can do now to build joy in the home and in the lives of those you live with, whether that's your family or your roommates. And we can all apply these tips to help us have a joyful attitude in serving the local church too and show warmth to our church family. With that, our first tip is to control our thought life. Ungodly thoughts will ruin a godly atmosphere and take away the joy in any place, including the home and the church. It's easy for women to get stuck in their heads, overthink things, or be controlled by their emotions. Instead of giving into hysterical fears or exaggerating problems in your mind, see your circumstances and problems truthfully and realistically. Rather than giving into sinful thoughts, we can control our thought life and replace wrong thinking with God's word, which reminds me of Philippians 4, 8, which says, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. That's an excellent verse for us to think about, Elisa. For me, it's easy to get emotional when it's the time of the month or when I'm tired, and I found myself being snappy or mean to my husband about small mistakes. Seeing the consequence of my sinful emotions bringing down the atmosphere of my home made me think more about how I want to deliberately choose to think about what I'm thankful for instead. Like it says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, I remind myself to be thankful for my husband and ask him about his day rather than being selfish. And when he does think differently than I do, I think about Philippians 2.3 and how I want to be selfless and lay aside my own preferences so that I can create a joyous atmosphere in my home rather than being naggy and just dragging him down. Thanks for sharing that, Jen. It's encouraging to hear how she has been able to control her thoughts by thinking about God's word and choosing to be selfless rather than giving into the temptation to be controlled by her emotions. So thanks for sharing that. Not only can we build a joyous atmosphere in the home by our thoughts, but we can also do it by our speech. 
So our second tip is to use your speech wisely and for good. A challenging question we can all ask ourselves in regards to our speech is, do you complain a lot? Do you complain about the chores you need to do or how hard it can be to take care of your husband or children? Do you complain about serving the church and how busy you are? Someone at our church wants to find complaining as expressing bitterness because of not getting what you want and a distrust of God. Complaining is selfishness and can influence others in the home to complain and lack joy too. What's amazing to consider is that we can cultivate a joyous atmosphere in the home and turn our homes into places of refuge and encouragement rather than places of complaining. We can have a joyous attitude in the home about the privilege to serve our families and serve brothers and sisters in the church. We can use our speech to build up and encourage those in our homes too, as it says in Ephesians 4.29. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment, so that it will give grace to those who hear. We can choose to put off complaining and put on encouragement and also be thoughtful to consider if what we want to say will actually build up those who are in our homes and cultivate joy. We can make a powerful impact of joy in the home when we control our thoughts and words. And now our third tip is to show hospitality to others. Use your home to serve your family, the local church, and neighbors, and strive to be warm and inviting to all those who step foot into your home. 1 Peter 4, 9 says, be hospitable to one another without complaint. We don't want to have thoughts like, people make such a mess when they come over, or I don't have enough time to clean my house before people come, so can we just pass on hosting this time? Instead, we can have thoughts like, what a joy and privilege it is to open up my home. I get to serve the church and also show them what a godly home looks like. Yes, can you see the difference in the attitudes of these contrasting thoughts? God has given you your home as a means to serve others and to do it joyfully. You can have a joyous attitude alongside your husband in working together to use your home to serve the church. So when God gives you opportunities to extend hospitality to others, don't pass those up and instead invite others into a warm home where you and your husband can encourage them to find their joy in God. And our fourth tip is to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul and love other people, including your family, local church, neighbors, and others. We can see this in Luke 10, 27, where Jesus talks about the two greatest commandments. So love God first and foremost and be completely devoted to him. Spend time reading his word and praying every morning and every evening. If we struggle with loving God, who is perfect, how much harder will it be to love others who are sinful? That's so true. When we love God first, we will be able to love others, including our families and the church, with a sacrificial, Christ-like love. A way you can show love to your family or those that you live with is to take moments throughout the day to show and express your care and love for them. For example, while you're cleaning the home, take a break to tell your child how much you love them or thank your husband for his leadership in the family. If you have roommates, take a break from what you're doing to ask them how their day is going and check in on them and pray for them. Reach out to others and the church and send them Bible verses to encourage them too. There's so many opportunities you have to encourage others. These are just four tips to get you started for how you can grow to cultivate a joyous atmosphere in your home. If you're excited to start applying some of these tips, please give this video a like. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can share more truths from God's word with you. We hope that you're encouraged to fulfill the role that God has given you to be a worker at home and cultivate greater joy in your home. And how neat is it that you can also apply these same principles and tips to the local church too? We can be women of warmth and joy and be a godly influence to others in the church. So until next time, stay, stay captivated. captivated. <laughs> AC, AC makes a warm, joyous home. <laughs>